Hey, time for your life's math and history, and we are going to take a look at different algebra functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to review all the different functions that we've learned from Algebra 1 to Geometry to Algebra 2, so we can get ready to prepare for pre-calculus and higher level math. So what we're going to do is look at the function and talk about the domain and the range. Because the domain and the range kind of explain what possible things could be put in for x to get for y and still make the equation true. So let's get started. So first we have a quadratic. Let's see what happens on the graph. Okay, so it looks like that quadratic has an x to the power of 2. And it will always have for its domain, it's going to infinitely go positive and infinitely go negative. So we say negative infinity to positive infinity. But our range, it starts at 0, then goes up to positive infinity. So a quadratic is going to be a parabola. Let's move on to another function that looks similar, which is absolute value. So let's take a look at this kind of function on the graph. Okay, so absolute value has the same idea, but instead it has a point that starts at zero. Just like the previous one with the quadratic, the absolute value one is basically the same thing, where the domain is negative infinity to comma positive infinity. And our range starts at zero and reaches positive infinity. So absolute value happens when something is always positive. Something similar to quadratics, where if you put a negative number and square it, or any kind of number and square it, it will always become a positive number, if it's a number, in a way. So yeah, let's take a look at another set of what we can take a look at. Hmm. So right over here is another set of different functions. So specifically, this one is a square root because it literally has the function of x is a square root of x. So let's see what happens when we try to graph it on the graph. So for the square root function, we notice that it doesn't go negative when you put in something for x, because negative square roots is not going to happen, and that's not a totally different branch of mathematics. You would have to use imaginary numbers, which for this case scenario won't work for a square root function. So here's what happens. A domain has to be either 0, including itself, to infinity, and it will help you create a square root function. Our range is going to start at 0, comma, positive infinity again. So that is the square root function. Let's take a look at the reciprocal function, or many schools like to call the rational function. So the rational function is 1 divided by x. Will, which would change everything. So rational functions in Algebra 2 are known to have holes, where things might be undefined. But on the graph we showed you, you notice that there's something going like this and going like that on the graph. That's because if you go at 0 and for y and 0 and for x, you'll notice that those lines will never, ever, ever, ever touch. So for the domain and the range, Unlike this one and the previous ones, we can't say 0 is included, so we have to do something. So we can say the domain is going to be zero, negative infinity to 0, but union to 0 
to neg to positive infinity. So that is how it's gonna work. We can't say because you can have numbers as tiny as decimals below one. So we can't say one and one. But what about the range? Pretty much the exact same idea. For the range is the same set of numbers. Negative infinity to zero is union to zero comma positive infinity. So that is a rational function, which is a really hard one to understand. Let's take a look at another one. So right over here is a cubic function. Let's see what it looks like on the graph. So for a cubic function, it is a very easy one to identify and understand. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. That's because it's going from left infinitely and right infinitely. And our range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Going up and down and vice versa which is similar to absolute value and the quadratic right here. But what about the cube root? We've been learning about the square root, but what about the cube root? Okay, so the cube root has infinitely left and right and top and bottom. So what it happens what happens is you can put positive numbers into the x and still make the function work and happy. But unlike the square root, the one right over here, unlike the square root, the cube root could have negative numbers too. So what happens is we can say that our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And our range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. So the cube root is especially special. Unlike how you can't put negative numbers into a square root, because then it wouldn't really make sense in the function world. Let's take a look at two more functions. So here is a logarithmic function, where we have the f of x equals the log of x. Let's see what happens. So for a logarithmic function, you can't go into the negatives, but you can say our domain is zero comma positive infinity. But we can also say our range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, and that is a logarithmic function. What about the exponential one? How is that going to look like? Okay, so for an exponential function, we can say our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, but our range it starts at zero, well, it never reaches zero, but it gets close to zero, but then it goes to positive infinity. So that is an exponential function. And these are all the functions that we're supposed to look at when we get ready for some pre-calculus. I hope this video has helped you understand different algebra functions. Thank you for watching Top Finger Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.